Okay, so I'm making this uh, video uh, because, long story short, uh, the wheels that came on my Scott Ransom, E Ransom, uh, I've managed to buckle them. And I'm going to get them straightened out and I'm going to put some winter spikes on them. But for going up the Peak District, which is really rocky, I wanted something a bit more substantial, so I bought these carbon wheel sets. Now, they were pretty much half price, but that meant I've had to go for the six bolt rotor connection. And this bike comes with the center lock rotor mounts. Uh, front wheel's fairly straightforward, uh, but obviously the rear wheel, uh, if I can find that, that is a magnet for the sensor and the sensor is mounted somewhere behind there um, and I wasn't quite sure how I would fit these six bolt rotors onto my bike and still have the magnetic pickup now the people I bought these wheel sets from, or this wheel set from, um, they were quite helpful and they put me on to this little gadget here, which is, if you can see that number, if you search that number or that number and that name, you'll find that gadget online. Unfortunately, when you see it online, all you see is a picture of that no no clues on how to mount it or how big it is or anything so the first thing that i did is i whipped off my caliper so once i've got the caliper off there you can see the sensor rotates where the magnet is which is approximately there if you can see that and then I drop this down in between and that one's slightly big so I've got the next size down basically because I've got nothing I ain't got anything that I can measure that with so that sits in between the magnet and the sensor and that tells me how much gap I've got between my current disc setup and my sensor. Next thing is I measured that and that's 6.36 so I've got roughly six and a half mil between the sensor and the disc. I've measured up the wheel when I find it. I've measured that distance from that point to that point. And by the time I've mounted that disc on there, it comes out within three quarters off, uh, three quarters to a millimeter more out than this current disc. Bearing in mind that you've got sideways slot on your caliper right so I ordered these from a shop with a view to collecting them so I didn't part with any money till I've been to the shop and picked that up at the same time because there's no indication on the website on how thick that is however it, it it measures less than three millimeter so this is gonna mount on there I do have an additional uh, issue to overcome on this particular disc um, as you might be able to tell it's got a slight rebate for this bolt head to sit in 
and this magnet is going to sit on the outside it can't go inside because then your disc won't sit square on the hub so it must fit outside and it must fit there now to get full tension on those two bolt pickups uh, I blagged a couple of thin washers from the bike shop which actually measure a millimeter give or take a, a few parts of a millimeter uh, they measure roughly a millimeter in diameter more than the bolt head so I am gonna have to file these down and then perhaps even file them down but if you're using like a, a laser cut disc which is just like flat metal you won't have that issue you won't have those recesses so consider your rotors when you buy your rotors if you want to simplify it I've made a little bit of work for myself there but it's nothing I can't overcome I have took a bit of a flyer here, but this is by Bosch, and it's Bosch for a six, six bolt mount, so you would think it's going to drop on the same diameter as the uh, centre lock one. Washers that sit in that rebate uh, without having to grind edges off. Uh, I just drilled centres out. Um, they do stand about a quarter of a mil proud, but that's not a problem. The problem would be that with these rebates, if I didn't pack them out, and this has been so thin, this material here being so thin, uh, you could basically crush it down and you end up with a sloppy fit. So for flat plate rotors, you're supposed to turn your rotor slightly to one side to take up any slack in the holes. But because these hope ones have got this recess in, the bolts are dead fit. Um, so I've not needed to do that. Uh, and then you must remember to tighten up in a sequence. So these are just nipped at the moment. And then just go around them. You should use a torque wrench, but I don't have one. Uh, and I've spent enough time tightening bolts up to have a feel for it. Next job, whip the cassette off this one. Bang it on there, put that in, not bother changing the tire, put it in, just switch on the power and uh, give it a spin and see if it comes up with any errors. No point putting on tires on if it's not gonna work from the start. Grub screw, it's two piece cassette. This one chain whip. Chains a chain on my chain whip, so it's a 12 speed chain. The one that were on it before used to slip off a lot. 
I'll never get this right way around. There you go. These E30, I like these E13 cassettes, they've just got like a bayonet fitting that fits in here. So you can change that. You barely ever wear that one out. And that's just retained by a Allen key. Uh, Make sure that's engaged. Sleeve back on. Takes into there, just use a little turn. Bang that in there, put my caliper back together and give it a whirl. Right, so the wheel's in uh, and what I've done is I've put the disc, uh, the caliper on quite loose. Just there's the sensor, you might not be able to see this but as I rotate it round you can see that it just misses the sensor which is there there's probably about a three or well, about a three mil gap so it's not going to catch on it it's in the right position so there's no reason why this don't work so we'll just power up take her for a spin And that's just barely nipped up. Get another spin. Hit the brake, hold it, and then nip up properly.
Jeffrey Gooden.